Tower, this is Ghost Rider requesting a flyby. Negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. No, no, ma'am, this is not a good idea. Sorry, Goose, but it's time to bust the tower. That's enough flyby for one day. Welcome back, my friends, to update 5 for the touchscreen mini panel, TMP. Except this time, the mini panel is not so mini anymore. As you might have guessed, we are getting a 7-inch touchscreen upgrade. With a larger work area, it is now possible to display more information and access more controls on the screen at one time, which helps to reduce the need to change pages. In this video, we'll be going over these topics. Starting with the connection, this is just a quick recap for those who are new to the mini panel. We have seen this picture before. With the 5SIM 2020, our TMP and SPAT.next working as the interface in the middle. If you are not familiar with this, you can revisit the Update 2 video. And by the way, this current release is for FISIM 2020 only. Next, the hardware. The working components remains to be the ESP32, four rotary encoders, and an Xeon touchscreen. The wiring stays exactly the same. We are only swapping the 3.3 inch screen out to replace it with a 7 inch. Now of course you'll most likely need a new enclosure for this, but the screen does not affect the connection between the ESP32 and the encoders. You are probably aware that Nexion makes many models for a 7 inch touchscreen. I will save the discussion on that topic towards the end of this video. Okay, let's take a look of the new user interface of a 7-inch panel. In terms of workspace, there is a 160% increase of usable screen area. You take advantage of that by dividing the screen into a roughly 60-40 split, displaying a primary page on the left and a secondary page on the right. Here the panel starts up with the situation page and the settings page. You can change the page on a pane independent of the others. A bank of page selection buttons are here and the secondary bank on the right. However, the big limitation is that a particular page is available either only from the left or from the right. For example, the situation page can only be shown on the left while the engine page can only be open on the right. The only exception being the autopilot page, which you can open on either side for obvious reason. Why the limitation? The short explanation is because of the constraints from the Nixion design. A Nixion page always means the entire screen. Once you have defined a page, you can only modify just a section of the display. It allows only a limited and fixed number of screen objects on any display page. And that's too bad. And it took a lot of tricks just to get to this appearance of a dual pane interface. While the bulk of this update is for the 7 inch dual pane support, there are also a few new features going into some of the pages. Let's do a walkthrough. The larger screen real estate has enabled us to do two things. First, we can load up the pages with more contents. Second, we can make the objects on the page a little bigger, therefore easier to manipulate. Starting with the situation page, I once again overloaded the page, can't help it. The waypoint information in this upper corner has stayed the same but the direction pointer is now linked only to the waypoint. The indicated airspeed has also been separated from the ground speed, 
By the way, the indicated airspeed will automatically switch into reading mark when it's over 0.9 mark. I can't demonstrate that today because we have not been cleared to go supersonic in our baron over the city of Paris. On the second row, the touchdown time and the vertical speed have become full-time readouts as well. And the G meter is now included, so you won't overstress your aircraft. We have a new box for engine performance. It monitors the fuel flow and temperatures, EGT or ITT, automatically chosen based on the engine type. The rest of the items are not new, except many of them will now respond to touch. Just a recap of what the touch responses are. Touching the rudder or the aileron trim will center the trim. The barometer will tune to the local setting. Gear up, gear down. And for these three indicators, touch will center the elevator trim, fully retract the flaps, and arm the speed brakes. For the annunciators here, clear the warning and operate the parking brakes. Next, the autopilot page has nothing new. The GPS page now also supports the G3X and the G3000 GPSs. The late additions here is because these units are found in fewer aircraft in the sim and they are mainly touchscreen operated in the virtual cockpits so they don't make use of the rotary knobs as much. The only change to the radio page is the audio selection buttons. They have been relocated to a new audio page on the right pane. Then the monitor page is just for debugging. You probably have never used it, but now it has a special bonus. It can show you the frames per second. Moving on to the right, that's where you find the group of so-called flexible panel pages. Each one is customized for over a dozen different Asobo aircraft. They provide you access to ice protection, interior and exterior lights when you need them. This electrical and engines page is added in the last update. You can use the rotary knobs to turn the key to the magnetos. Now the rotaries also control the fuel selector. And to prevent you from accidentally turning the selector off, you need to press and hold the switch, then turn counterclockwise to turn the selector off. And with the new audios page, it gives you a bit better control of the audio panel than before. We again take advantage of our rotary encoders. You can use them to adjust the comm radio's volume up or down, and for the master volume as well. Going into the second bank of the page buttons, you can call up the essential autopilot page on the right pane. For example, you may find it handy to have the situation page open on the left together with the autopilot on the right. Last but not least, we have come to the settings page. This is where you configure your mini panel. You already know you can select an operating profile here. So let's talk about the aircraft detection item here. Normally you can just leave it at auto and be done with it. What it affects is the custom flexible panel pages. That is the lights, engines, and audio pages. The mini panel can normally detect the current aircraft from the sim. Going back to a panel page, and you can see the name of the chosen aircraft in the upper corner. But for whatever reason you want to apply one make for a different aircraft instead, the manual mode lets you override the automatic assignment. You might find that necessary if you are using a non-English version of Windows or the sim. The rest of the options are nothing new. I hope I have covered all the new features. I know you probably want to have the flexibility to open any page on either the left or the right pane for your choice. 
As I mentioned before, that will be very difficult given the Nexion programming architecture, but some enhancement from the current state may be possible. Let's switch topic to talk about the options with building a mini panel. For the 7 inch hardware, I'm launching a new revision series. The version number begins with a 7. For the 4.3 inch, which actually shares the same code base, it is released with version number begins with a 2. The code for the Nexion displays is of course available in two versions as well. You can tell them apart with the 7 and the 2. Obviously, the ESP32 firmware and the Nexion code have to match up. When the firmware powers up, it will verify the compatibility. If the code on the two devices fail to match, the screen will show incompatible firmware. You probably are aware that the Nexion displays is available in three different series. The Nexion source and binary files as released will work only with the intelligent series, but it can be easily modified to build for the basic and enhanced series. However, down the road, there will be no guarantee. As for the resistive versus capacitive option, I think you all know the difference. There is no surprise that the capacitive model is more sensitive and requires less force to operate. The bottom line is, I have the intelligent model with capacitive touch. I can only validate my code on this model going forward. I think you can guess what my recommendation is. So, with this 7-inch display, shall we keep calling the TMP the touchscreen mini panel or the touchscreen multi panel? In any case, I intend to maintain the 4.3-inch for the next few months. But beyond that, it will depend on how much new features can practically be implemented on a small screen and how much effort it would take to support separate model. And that's all for now. If you intend to build your own TMP, read the design note PDF. Ah, one more thing. If you plan to upgrade to the 7 inch and wonder what to do with your old 4.3 inch unit, well, perhaps you can use both at the same time. Here I have the 7 inch TMP set up to display the situation page and the autopilot. And the old 4.3 inch is controlling the G1000 GPS. In spat.next, you can set up your TPMs as two serial devices, each on a different COM port. Thank you for watching. Be seeing you.